So just like before, we have, this is actually where the videos that are being recorded right this second are being stored. These are Dr. Bean's videos. You've got the other YouTube videos. And in this chapter, you're going to see a few simulations. These are PHET simulations, and they are amazing. They knocked them out of the park when they designed a lot of these gas simulations. You'll see it in the lab also. Just as note, if you're following along in the book, we are omitting 8.1 and a little bit of, well, 8.6 also. We might make a quick comment reference to 8.6, one thing in 8.6. So let's go to this simulation. I happen to already have it open over here. Lay it on top here. And I'm going to open it. So this is really a great simulation. And I know this is going to be a little small. So you may want to open it on your own so that you can see this. But what I want to zoom in on is the pressure valve. Right now it says 0 ATM. I might do a half screen with it to make it better. There we go. 0 ATMs. And I'm going to put a pump of gas in there. And the gas is just represented with little circles. And we're going to try to answer these questions. So one is what causes pressure? How does gas size affect the speed? And describe the motion. So there's some parts to the motion. So the first one is going to be the pressure. Notice there's no pressure until now. All right, let me clear it. So it knows the pressure is at zero, and now is when the pressure reads. I'll do it one more time. Now, do you see how it didn't read any pressure until the gas molecules hit the side of the container? So what is pressure? So pressure is that force of the gas molecules hitting the side of the container. So it's the first force, and, and notice they didn't hit the entire container, right? They hit just a little section of it. So it's the for, force per, um, a lot of times we call it per square inch in the U.S. But it's the for, force over a certain size that the glass molecules hit the side of the wall with. And that's what pressure is. How does gas side affect the speed of the gas? And just as a quick distinction, there's a difference between the speed of the gas and the average energy. So average energy would take in consideration if it goes like a little slow and then a little fast and a little slow. So that's the average energy. But we're talking about the speed. So I've got two gas molecules. So just watch these gases for a second. All right. Now watch the smaller ones. I'm sure you can tell the difference immediately. The small gases are faster. That's speed. Okay, let's talk about the motion. We're going to follow one gas molecule. First, we're going to figure out if they stop moving. We're going to look about when they collide. Is their energy conserved? And then um, what happens at different temperatures? So first, we're just going to... You're going to want to track, like maybe this top uh, purple. Just track it. Notice it's going in a straight line, and then it hits off the side. It keeps going. Oh, it got hit by something else. So it travels in a straight line until it gets hit by something else. And then it continues traveling in a straight line from the point it was hit with. I don't know if you're still following it, but notice it is kind of changing speed. It doesn't mean that it's out of energy. Can you tell that it's not, that the energy isn't going down? If you were to open the simulation and watch it for 10 minutes, those gas molecules would still be moving 10 minutes later. So they do not stop moving. And when they collide... Is a total energy conserved? And this might be hard to see. What that means is, like, if, if a fast one hits a slow one, is any of the energy between them lost? Like, it's okay for the fast one to hit the slow one and transfer energy to the slow one. That's okay. Um, but, like, is it lost to the environment? Like, you know, is there something that, like, in real life what might happen is when you're going down a hill, you've got friction, you know, that gets in the way of a full transfer of energy. And just so you know, they don't, they're, they're, yes, their energy is conserved. They, they don't lose it. They may transfer some energy to someone else, but then they get it back from someone else and it just keeps going. So their total um, kinetic energy is conserved and they, they just don't stop moving. That's the way gases are. Like all the gases that you're breathing in and out of your lungs, they're like that. Even when they're in your lungs, they are bouncing all around. Some of them are going to hit the sides of your lungs and your lungs are going to grab them and do stuff with them. And some of them may not. So, and then at different temperatures. So this is one temperature and I am going to heat it up. So we're talking about the whole energy. So if 
everything in the system, everything starts moving faster and you're just seeing a lot more motion. Okay, that is a total kinetic energy thing. Not like if a few of them, but if all of them do. And if all of them start going slower, that's another thing also. So I'm heating it up. Heating, heating, heating. Do you see this temperature going up? So I'm going to pause it for a second. That's pretty hot. Can you tell? They're moving a lot faster. Like everyone has a lot more energy now. So at increased temperature, they do have increased kinetic energy. That's the energy of motion. More about energy is in chapter 9. All right, so let's kind of review what you've seen so far. And you will see a lot more in the lab. But just to review, macroscopic, so that's like, you know, gases are so small. That's like the great big um, overall view of them. The macroscopic properties of a gas, pressure, temperature, are explained in terms of microscopic components, such as, and what are these microscopic components? How about we just say extremely small size or small particles? So like we look at the small particles and we say, okay, the effect on each small particle is very small, but if you add it all up, it's like a huge effect overall on the whole system. So this thing is called the kinetic molecular theory of gases, and this helps us describe ideal gases. More on ideal gases coming up. But in order to apply the kinetic model of gases, we have these assumptions. And that's what we, we were just talking about. Okay, so one is that individual gas volume is negligible. This means if you are in a stadium and the stadium like is sealed, like it's a, it's a covered sealed stadium, and you have a little tiny fly in the stadium, compared to the size of the stadium, the fly's volume is negligible. Or imagine even smaller, like a little teeny tiny piece of sand. That's what this means, that the individual, each individual gas volume is negligible compared to the size of the container that it's in. We also assume they undergo no intermolecular attractions or repulsions. That kind of means that when those gas molecules hit each other, it's not like they are temporarily attracted to each other and want to hang out next to each other for a few seconds before then bounding on their way. All the gases that you saw in that simulation would bounce into someone else and then they would immediately bounce away. They didn't like kind of stick around for a little bit. That's what those attractions would do. And repulsions would keep them from even bouncing. They'd get close and then they'd immediately go away from each other. So we don't have that then for an ideal gas. And then particles are in continuous forward motion, if you want to call that forward motion. They're in continuous, constant, um, straight motion. Collisions between gas particles are completely elastic. Again, that just means that we don't lose a little bit of energy to, I don't know, the gas is scuffing along the side of the container or something like that. And then here's the biggie. The average kinetic energy is the same for all gases at a given temperature, regardless of the identity. This might be surprising, but like you saw, the kinetic energy of a sample increases with temperature. So at any certain temperature, again, the average kinetic energy that they're bouncing off of each other with, it does stay the same for all of them. At a given temperature. So at increased temperature, they will have higher average kinetic energy. And again, average because they're going to be slowing when they hit each other little and speeding up when they hit each other little.